Hi. Movie Express Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a crime, mystery and thriller film called Seven. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a desolated city, Detective William Somerset is preparing to retire and leave the horrors of the city. Before he retires, he is partnered with Detective David Mills, a cocky, young and short-tempered cop from Springfield, a comparatively small town. He and Somerset meet at the scene of a homicide Somerset is investigating. Somerset offers to take Mills out for a drink so they can talk and get to know each other. However, Mills is too eager to get right to work and is unimpressed with Somerset's attempt to mentor him. The two investigate the murder of a grossly obese man who died on his couch and found out that he died from overeating spaghetti as he was being forced to eat. Their captain thinks it's just a fat kid being bullied, nothing unusual. But Somerset thinks it's much more complicated and thinks the newbie isn't up for the task. Captain agrees and asks him to get lost and asks Somerset to investigate the murder. The following day, Mills is given the murder case of prominent defense attorney Eli Gould, with greed written in Gould's blood on the floor. Going to the victim's house, Somerset finds three groove marks in front of the refrigerator. Somerset looks behind the refrigerator and he finds the word gluttony written behind the fridge in grease, along with a note containing a quote from Milton's Paradise Lost. Somerset theorizes that a serial killer is basing his crimes on the seven deadly sins, with five more to go. To give Mills and Somerset a chance to get along with each other, Mills's wife, Tracy Mills invites Somerset over for dinner. Halfway through their dinner, the house starts vibrating. Somerset makes a snarky remark and everyone lightens up. After Tracy goes to bed, Mills and Somerset examine case evidence from the two scenes. Gould was forced to carve a pound of flesh off of his body, and subsequently bled to death. They find a picture of Gould's wife with blood painted around the eyes. Believing that this to be a clue, the detectives have a distraught Mrs. Gould look at the pictures in a safe house and she notices an abstract painting that is upside down. They carefully brushed powder on the wall behind the painting, Somerset finds fingerprints outlining the words help me. After running the fingerprints through their database, the prints are traced a day later to a sick pedophile named Victor, who escaped conviction for the rape of a minor with the help of his lawyer, Eli Gould, a greed victim. SWAT and the detectives raid his apartment and find Victor to be the sloth victim, having been bound to his bed for one year to the day, as evidenced by pictures at the scene, one taken every day from the day he is discovered. Remarkably, he is still alive but suffering from severe physical and mental deterioration. His hand was cut off and pushed onto the wall behind the painting to leave the prints. Mills and Somerset ask to interrogate Victor in the hospital, but the doctor says that he's chewed off his tongue and that his brain is mush from the ordeal. That evening, Tracy calls Somerset and requests that he meet with her. The next morning, Somerset meets Tracy in a diner where she tells him how miserable she is in the city. At Somerset's urging, Tracy reveals the truth, the reason why she asks him out, to tell him she is pregnant, afraid of raising a child where they now live and afraid of telling David. Somerset advises her to tell her husband only if she decides to have it, and he sets himself as an example, he insisted his partner have an abortion, that he finally convinced her, and now he is remorseful. Later that day, using a contact in the FBI, Somerset gets a library list of people who have borrowed books related to the seven deadly sins. The list leads the detectives to a man named John Doe, whose apartment they visit soon after. A man in silhouette sees them as he comes home, pulls out a gun and begins shooting. They begin a cat and mouse chase exchanging gunfire. Doe escapes through the window in the apartment and fires a couple more shots before scurrying. After a short chase, the man presumably Doe hits Mills with a tire iron, keeps him subdued at gunpoint, but lets him live and suddenly flees. Mills wants to force their way into Doe's apartment, believing that they have probable cause because Doe shot at them. Somerset tries to talk him down, saying the method they used to find Doe's apartment was illegal, and that Doe would go free if they caught him. Mills kicks the door in any way. They search the apartment after bribing a resident to claim she had called the detectives about Doe. Inside find notebooks of his thoughts, trophies of the crimes and a picture of Mills fighting off Doe, who, at the time, was posing as a press photographer. John Doe calls the apartment to flex on his escape, and congratulates the detectives on finding him and apologizes for hitting Mills, also telling the young detective that he admires him greatly. He told them that their actions have caused him to change his plans and he hangs up. They also find a photo of a young woman, a prostitute, who they believe may be the next victim. A receipt leads them to a sand leather shop where Doe placed an order for a sexual device. In a nightclub, the girl is soon found dead in a room with lust written on the door. They found a shaken man forced by Doe at gunpoint to wear and use the device, a large strap-on dildo with a blade attachment to make out with her. The owner of the place, Wild Billy, had no clue about the briefcase John Doe used, 
as every customer used to carry special clothes or equipment into the place. The next morning, a model is found dead with pride written on the crime scene. Her nose has been cut off upon which Doe gave her the choice of suicide by sleeping pills or calling for help and living scarred. She chose the former and swallowed the pills. As the detectives return to the police headquarters, John Doe walks up to them, his hands bleeding. He was shaved the skin from his fingertips to avoid identification and gives himself up. He talks to his lawyer and agrees that if he can take Somerset and Mills to two more bodies, he will confess to all the murders. Doe's lawyer also warns that if Somerset and Mills don't agree, Doe will plead insanity and the last two victims may never be found. Wanting a confession, the detectives agree. Somerset and Mills both have microphones taped to their chests so the rest of the task force can monitor their conversation with Doe. During the prep, Mills tries to tell Somerset about a concern he has with Tracy, but can't bring himself to talk fully about it. As the three travel to the desert outskirts of the city in a car, they are trailed by a police helicopter for security. Doe explains his rationale behind the murders as a way of showing people the truly evil nature of the world, as well as his desire to punish the wicked. He goes on to say he will be remembered and admired for what he has done, having been chosen to do so. As Doe nags, the disgusted Mills gets pissed off, and screams at Doe while Somerset remains calm, but plainly worried. Once they reach the outskirts, Doe directs them to a specific spot near some power cable towers. The detectives walk Doe out to an open spot. After a few moments, a van appears and Somerset stops at several hundred yards away, leaving Mills behind to cover Doe. The driver claims someone paid him $500 to deliver a box to Mills at this place at exactly 7 o'clock. As Somerset opens the box, he recoils in horror from what he sees inside. As he races back to Mills and desperately yells for him to throw his gun away, Doe states to Mills that he admires Mills' life, to the point of being envious of his wife and the love they share. He goes further, saying he visited Mills' home and that he tried to play husband with Tracy that day but it didn't work out and he took a souvenir instead, her pretty head. It was Doe's plan that Mills will kill him, as Doe himself was guilty of envy, jealous of Mills' simpler life. He also reveals to Mills that Tracy was pregnant, and that she begged to be kept alive for the child's sake. Mills, despite the pleading of Somerset, is so devastated by his wife's death and the knowledge that she was pregnant, that he shoots Doe in the head, Doe closing his eyes to receive his punishment. Mills showers Doe's dead body with leads. In killing Doe in vengeance, Mills comes to embody the sin of wrath, completing Doe's masterpiece. Somerset can only stand by, helpless to do anything. After a catatonic Mills is taken away, their captain tells Somerset that they'll take care of Mills, knowing the jury will condemn him. Somerset answers, whatever he needs. He also tells his captain that he will be around, implying that he will not be retiring. As the camera pans out from the desert, the movie ends with Somerset quoting Ernest Hemingway, the world is a fine place, and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. If you like this story, subscribe to our channel. Turn on the notification bell to get updated on more videos like this. Leave a like and comment. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.